Hey everyone, camping season has begun and we are very excited for this month's episode of In The Know. We have CEO of Campgrounds of America, Pat Hitmeyer with us. Pat? Thank you so much for being on In The Know with us. You're, you're welcome. Yeah. Uh, thanks for the invitation. So is camping season officially here? Well, you know, uh, we, we're in Montana, so sometimes it's hard to visualize what the rest of the country is experiencing. But uh, <laughs> I think it's been a little slow to pick up this year. Uh, yeah. Oftentimes we get uh, a surge of business around Easter, and it really depends on the Northeast and uh, the North Central uh, being able, and even the East Coast being able to pick up some uh, weekend campground uh, campers. And and uh, yeah. the cold weather, all you have to do is watch a little baseball this year, and and <laughs> you know that uh, the weather wasn't for camping, you know. So it's been a little slow, yeah. but it's coming. <laughs> Oh, that's cool. Where are you going to be headed this summer? Like, uh, do you have any favorite spots? Uh, we do a lot of hiking and uh, in around uh, Billings and and uh, uh, backpacking and uh, that kind of thing. Uh, you know, do a lot of snow skiing in the winter time. But uh, and then and then we get out and do some camping as well. The report came out this year, uh, last month, I think it was, and um, you know, so six million new households in North America going camping since two thousand fourteen. Um, and a 64% increase of frequent campers, uh, those numbers have to make you pretty happy, right? Yeah, I, I, we've been seeing that growth for quite a while, and it, it's in sync right. with all, everything else that, that you know uh, yeah. in the RV market and the camping market. It's all, it's all been pretty darn good since about 2011 or 12, and uh, every year uh, seems to be better than the last. Uh, yeah, we like to see a new influx of campers, and even though the majority of them are, are tent campers, uh, uh, I think getting people in the outdoors and experiencing what camping is all about uh, really adds a great foundation for our, our industry and our, our business specifically. Uh, yeah. So uh, the future looks very bright. Is there anything that you can attribute like that growth to? There's always this uh, natural sort of. Uh, innate kind of uh, feeling that people have to be outdoors and, and commute with uh, uh, with nature and, and also uh, with other people and they just don't yeah. get as much of it in today's world as uh, they may have and so we have the baby boomers who are certainly uh, retiring at a rapid rate and uh, who's you certainly I represent that group and 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 the uh, not the retirement part but the, uh, <laughs> the, the age group the, uh, oh, yeah, yeah, and then you have it. the millennials, which are which are you know a, even a bigger profile group that are starting to transition into families, and right. uh, uh, that particular group really I think once the, uh, believes in that time of experiences, uh, and so they're playing into this in a great way as well. So in between that, you've got that uh, middle group, the Gen Xs, that uh, you know are solidly uh, uh, focused on family and camping and and work and. And I think that there'll be a natural transition from baby boomers to Gen X, and then the millennials are going to add another big bump to our our business. So I think we're solid for another 50 years. Oh, absolutely. Well, and, and you've been in the industry for 36 years. I mean, tell me, like, how would you say camping has changed? You know, one of the things that I think is, is pretty interesting is, uh, you know, of the RVers in that big group you talked about a minute ago, uh, mm -hmm. you know, almost 40 percent of those people don't even own the RV you know so that's sort of a, a, a sort of striking in that you know and 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 a, it's almost that 40 percent that don't own is, a, is split between uh, you know they borrow it from a, probably a family member friend mm -hmm. or they it's that sharing of the rental of RVs you know either uh, the outdoorsy kind of thing where you're sharing peer-to-peer -peer or or right. are you at the uh, the RV general RV rental market so so you have this big draw to that uh, experience where I think, you know, 30 years ago, there wasn't that sharing of a product. And so that product's getting used a lot more, which is good for everybody. Right. Well, you just touched upon something I want to talk about, which is the outdoorsy marketing agreement. Um, what are your thoughts on like peer to peer RV rentals and newcomers to the RV, you know, RV camping? Um, is that something that we're going to continue to see just grow and grow? <laughs> well, it's a good question. I, I, I think that uh, I'm certainly hope so. Uh, I mean, it, it's, yeah. it's extremely positive for, I think, everybody, whether you manufacture RVs and you get, if the RV gets more use, then obviously that, that turnover 
uh, you know, from our perspective, more uses, more nights. Uh, that's great. Uh, you know, based on talking with Outdoorsy, and there's a number of competitors to Outdoorsy as well, uh, you know, their, their demand uh, for RVs outpaces their supply so by quite a bit. Mm-hmm. So I, anytime you get into that situation where the demand is so high, and uh, you know, I think that that will tend to be uh, more and more people will find uh, the opportunity to uh, use their RV as a, a source of revenue. Uh, now, mm-hmm. it won't be for everybody, but uh, I think that uh, I think a number of them will start to pick up on this. And, and as yeah. younger people start to buy these RVs, I think they'll, they'll be more apt to want to share their RV or share the expense of that RV by using it in that, uh, in that marketplace. But, I, yeah, I think the demand is solid. And uh, so yeah. we'll see where it plays out. Yeah, and I think you're right. Being more accustomed to that sharing, uh, sharing economy, like Airbnb. I mean, when I could, you know, would consider an RV, I also look at it as an investment opportunity for something like that. Um, so that's pretty cool. Well, yeah. you know, it sounds like KOA is uh, taking a proactive approach to creating adventure with the uh, Get Out There grants. Um, <laughs> you know, people describe their dream adventure, and a video production crew documents it. Uh, what are some of the outcomes KOA is hoping for in response to this? Well, it's a little outside our niche, certainly. Um, yeah. But I think that's that's the point. Uh, we're just trying to connect with a younger market, uh, stay current, vital, uh, a part of what's going on, um, and uh, and and make sense to that again, the more millennial focused, but not necessarily. There's adventures in yeah in in, in every age group. And, and I think that, uh, you know, KOAs, as we have such uh, diversity, both ge- from a geographical standpoint, you know, all over North America, and, and a, a lot of our properties are used as base camps. So in other words, they're, mm-hmm. they're, they're the way that I stay to go do my adventure. And so this just seemed like a, a way to bring attention to that, that concept of, of, of traveling, camping, to where you're going to go uh, raft the river or hike this or climb this mountain or whatever you might be, uh, what pursuit yeah. you might have. And uh, so far, it's, uh, it's turned up, uh, I think Mike was telling me the other day, we've got over 600 applicants already for this thing. Uh, really? So uh, they're, they're coming in at a fast pace. Because I know RVIA is like, or rather the Outdoor Recreational Roundtable is really focused on upgrading, you know, campgrounds um, in order to retain, you know, younger generations. Uh, what what kind of technical upgrades do you think need to be in place in order to do that? Well, I mean, I, you, I guess the basic is you start with the foundation. Uh, you know, a lot of campgrounds were built in the 60s and 70s and maybe before. Right. And, and so infrastructure becomes the first thing. Uh, but beyond mm-hmm. that, I think uh, higher quality sites, uh, uh, you know, higher quality in general. Uh, I think the expectation for... Uh, sort of uh, properties that aren't maintained uh, in a professional manner. Uh, you know that that yeah. ability for people to accept that is not there anymore, and and so right. they compare the quality of other experiences they have uh, with their camping experience, and so they expect more of it. Uh, you know, better bathrooms, better uh, uh, better stores, better entertainment, mm-hmm. uh, uh, higher quality. Uh, uh, outdoor experiences in general. So I think that those are the, some of the things that the private sector uh, can is, should focus on. And and, uh, and when you do, I can tell you from experience on properties that we own and, and have improved, uh, it makes a huge difference uh, in the kind yeah. of demand you receive. Uh, you know, KOA's system as a whole is probably one of the more exciting things that's happened in the last 15 years is is the mm-hmm. quality change of our system uh, to what it is today. Uh, the guest satisfaction scores that we receive uh, on our properties, and we've been measuring in the same way for, for a long time, uh, is so much higher today. And it's a it's combination of focus and managing what you measure and uh, uh, the uh, individual's ability and awareness uh, of that need. Right. And it's, it's very hard to turn around a organization that's a franchise organization we have independent owners at 500 different locations yes. and try to get them to make a, 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 a difference at the same time you know they all have issues they have their financial uh, problems or 
uh, opportunities, and they all have different needs and, and issues. So uh, right. I think that uh, to get them to move is a slow process, but once you do, we've got this momentum. And, and I feel very good about our brand today and where it sits. Uh, it doesn't mean that we have uh, a ways to go yet, but, but we're, we're moving really in the right direction. I'm very proud of that. We are seeing, as, as, as I'm seeing in other parts, uh, other companies, starting to see some new construction happen again, and that hasn't happened uh, in a long time. Uh, I mean, there's, yeah. there's a, we have probably two or three under construction right now, one that just opened up in Austin. And, and uh, I know that Sun Communities, which is, of course, a big uh, company, is actually building a number of, of large parks on both coasts. Uh, so we're starting to see some new construction of RV parks, which is, uh, which is great for, for everybody because there's, there's need for supply right now. Yeah. Well, Pat, uh, thank you uh, for being on In the Know with us. And, um, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll talk to you soon. We'll probably see you at your okay. convention at some point. But, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it sounds good. Thanks. I enjoyed it. Thanks again for being on In the Know with us. And we'll see you next month.